Hello everybody and welcome to another movie review. This time I am reviewing Nanook of the North, which was released in 1922. Gave this movie a rating of 2, viewed it in 2016. Nanook. Cover is not bad, although I don't really appreciate the wolf or the sled dog growling. I don't know. I just think it's unnecessary. Oh, by the way, the cover's not bad. Um, the green background is cool. Anyways, I have been weary, weary about seeing a nuke. Sorry, of the North for many reasons because it is notorious has a notorious reputation for being a fake documentary. Finally, I mustered enough strength to see it, although I knew that the running time of the film was pretty short, and my fears have been pretty much confirmed. Yep. The whole thing is a fake. Hence, it is safe to say that at this point, Robert Flattery was truly the father of mockumentary. Now, what comes to my mind the most every time action was going to happen in the nuke of the North is that there's a never a follow through to ensure the continuity. And it's just almost skilled editing to give the viewers a false feeling of actually seeing it for real. One good example of what I'm talking about is in the shot of the family members climbing out of the kayak. I have to call BS on that one because I am sure that the scene was done in a piecemeal with one person being inside the kayak and then getting out of it before stopping the film to let the next one to repeat the same procedure instead of doing all of them at once. I wonder if the audience were that impressed or came away believing the mockumentary during the time it was released. Here are some of the fake elements that were incorporated into Nanook of the North. The male protagonist's name wasn't really Nanook, but Alakaralak. The females who played as Nanook's wives were actually Robert Flattery's common law wives, and their names weren't Nyla and Kunu. One whose name was Alice, and the other one's true name remains unknown to this day. <laughs> the characters depicted in the film were def didn't really live up north in Canada. Ala Karilak definitely knew what a gramophone was. The Inuit stopped the practice of seal and walrus hunting long before. In fact, they had mostly stopped hunting for good. And they were already modernized, opting for guns instead of harpoons and motor pow motor powered boats instead of using oars. When Nanook was shown struggling with the rope, tugging it as hard as possible from the ice hole to capture a seal, a person, not the seal, from the other end of the line was doing the work. The walrus was hunted, wasn't alive at the point of kill, it was already dead prior to the attack. The Inuits lived in houses, not igloos during that time, and they wore regular clothes, not furs. During the igloo scene, it was too dark to film inside of the igloo, so a special igloo a fake one had to be constructed following the family pretending to go to bed during daylight. None of the shots were done on the first try. Everything was repeated until it looked perfect in the film. Many of the locals didn't know how to do the stuff as seen in the film, so Flattery had an expert brought over to teach them how so they could replicate skills for the film. Nanook didn't die of starvation two years after the film was completed, but possibly of tuberculosis at home. All in all, Nanook of the North is utter BS. Thank you so much for watching this movie review. If you want to check out a bad documentary or a mockumentary, go ahead and check this movie out. Go ahead and comment below and tell me all about it and how you feel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.